sometimes you just gotta do it. You know what I mean? Just do it. You wanna get good at something. Maybe it's music, maybe it's guitar. And I really wanna help. I just think you need to make a decision to yourself that you really wanna do it. Let's dive in. The pentatonic scale is considered one of the most iconic sounds of guitar and music. Alright, so I had a really, really misconception. I didn't get this scale. When I started playing guitar, and I might have mentioned it before, I thought it's an easy scale, next. Five notes, not interesting. But I was so, so wrong. And the thing is, a lot of us think we know it. and. The honest truth is that there are a few very simple steps that I can show you right now that if you do them, you will know the scale. There are three, three important points in that scale that makes us feel something emotionally. First of all, listen to the center, this is C. Now I have flat three, the pain of that note. Let's sing the C just to feel it one more time. Do, C, one, flat, three. That's how it sounds and feels. And this is very, very important. The second spot is actually the flat seven. Do, mm, do, flat, seven, one. And the third spot in that scale is usually the flat five or the sharp four when we're adding the note. That F sharp, you feel that pain? Question, who is your favorite blues guitar player? I need more blues in my life. Please drop a comment. And indeed, a lot of these sounds and phrases will mess around and explore that sharp four, that flat three, and a flat seven. What is C pentatonic consists of? These are the notes. We have five notes. Penta is five. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. But let's hear it. Let's feel the pain. That's the one. Okay, home bass. Mm, flat three. Mi bemol, flat three. How does it feel? Mm. Painful. Ooh, almost longing. Okay. Five, four. Right, so these are the sounds, and I'm kind of going over it quickly because I want to talk about a few more very important points. But the thing is, we want to tag this, and I know we spoke about it before with other things, but Look, if you want to do it well and correctly, you have to listen. You have to pay attention. We have to. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. All right, so how do we actually play it? So I'm going to show you the first position. At the end of the video, I will show five positions of the scale. So if you're a little more advanced, we can talk about a few more cool things later on. So stick around. If you're feeling this video, it would mean a lot if you can click the like button and maybe drop in comment because it's not easy sometimes with YouTube. And in that sense, if you want to support the channel even more, um, you can check out the Patreon. There's a lot of PDFs and it would mean a lot if you can support because I'm trying to make these videos happen. So the first thing, we want to again look at these notes, and maybe you know this position, but there's no end. If we really know and hear it and feel it emotionally, we can really make magic with this scale. One of the most important things with the pentatonic is because it's in a way general, it has only five notes and not seven as other scales at times. Um, it will work on a lot of things, which is kind of like a joker card, right? Or magical spell, if you will. That's why it's so great to really understand. If you're still here, it means you indeed like guitar and music. So I appreciate it. Please stick around because these points are crucial if you want to get good. And I'm here to help, so check it out. This is the position I'm playing and I want to make sure that I can play it in time. It doesn't need to be fast, just needs to be somewhat consistent. And another thing I'm doing as I'm playing it and talking to you, I'm thinking about the notes. I'm literally saying in my mind, one, flat, three, four, five. And to be completely honest, I am saying solfege. So I'm saying, do, mi, mol, fa, sol, si, mol, do. 
subscribe so I'm tagging the colors on the fretboard because as we know we're gonna meet this E flat quite a bit it's gonna be a good friend of ours so we want to really make sure we see it and hear it in the context of C all right all right so you get the scale fine you might have done it before but now we're gonna add one more note which is a common thing but I want us to really pay attention and I want us to make sure we're tagging it in a proper way so when we're listening to music we're hearing it against a center and it's very important because music is sort of this tension and release in emotional way to me uh, rhythmic melodic and harmonic and the melody right the, the scale that sharp 4 flat 5, same note, but I'm thinking about it in relationship to the C. That's why it's so painful, and that's why I'm playing that drone. So I want us to hear all the time. Those sounds that we hear over the blues, over the center, there is a little bit more into it, right? And that's coming from these masters like BB King to name a few side story how i met john mayer check it out we used to have this gig in the lower east side it's really funny so we're playing it's a jazz trio guitar bass and drums the drummer colin stranahan is saying hey man it's john mayer um after the set i say hi and i say hey man you wanna you wanna sit in and he's like no i'm good and i'm like hi you know totally feel free to sit in super chill like super low stress situation you know like we're talking he's telling me he went to berkeley and telling me some stories really nice and then we're playing another set cool really fun we talked to him a little bit more i think we played three sets that day after the the gig i walk back um to my spot um in brooklyn we call him just walking back and i'm like hey man so who, who's your friend he's like hey man, it, it was john mayer i was like ah oh, yeah john john mayer so i type it on my phone i go back home I googled John Mayer and I was like, ah, cool. And actually, he was super nice and he came every week. We came like three or four times um, to that spot and we just talked. I, I literally had no clue who he was. It was really funny. Now I really like his music, but I really didn't know. We're back. All right, so we have the position of the pentatonic scale. We just added that flat five or sharp four. And I'll play it in those two octaves. So the first thing I want to do here and you can find a few different things, they're all fine, is I want to play it in time in a clear way, right? So, I want to create this clarity in my ears and fingers of what I'm doing. So when I want to pull it, when I want to... So when I want to use that sound, that flat 5, sharp 4, the F sharp basically, that clashy sound, I can pull it. So when I'm tagging it and singing it every time, do so when I'm doing that, I keep reinforcing the colors. And I'm doing it in C because I know a lot of you are doing it only in A minor. So it's cool to play one pentatonic and maybe move a shape, but we really want to know the notes. It's not only shapes, okay? If we want to be able to create with these sounds, we have to create. We get good at what we do. So I'm just going to loop a little loop. I'm gonna play the scale, no music yet, just literally playing it, eight notes. With awareness. Now I'm gonna pause. Again. Eight notes and pause. Almost music, not really. Now I'm gonna be a little more free, still in that simplicity, <clears throat> sorry, world. And you see, there is almost music. And it's cool because I'm not doing anything. I'm literally playing the scale. I'm not adding notes. I'm not doing any complex rhythms. It's very simple. 
The point is that you have to create. If we want to get good at soloing, at understanding scales, it's not just playing it up and down, which is fine. It's a part of it, but you know, you want to create and it's as important as knowing the position. One of my biggest revelations is that sometimes these shapes sucks. And I'm saying it because we want to think about sounds and music, literally thinking about the colors. So what I'll do, and I do it every day actually, I'll take a scale, a center, and I'll play it around the guitar, but I'll play it on one string, okay? So I'm gonna take this loop one more time, playing C minor pentatonic on the fifth string. Here we go, check it out. Okay, so that's just ascending, right? But now I'm gonna try and solo with that limitation. So it's really fun and it's challenging because I need to just think about the sounds, the notes, and it's actually in a way challenging and in a way liberating because I don't need to find positions. It's just the notes. It literally is purely one flat three, four, five flat seven, one. And I'm just playing it and then I'm exploring music with it. And it's, you don't need to play the best solo of your life, but you need to create with it. If you're serious about pentatonic and practicing, do that exercise on each one of the strings. See how it feels and find a note slowly but surely. All right, I'm gonna go over the five position of the pentatonic really slowly and clearly so you have it and then you can solo even more. All right, position one. Position two, starting again from the C. And I'm still tagging the sounds. Sometimes I'll have the C, Do. position, fourth is here, do, and the fifth one is here, do, and it's really good to then play them and kind of go into them and shift between the position. What I mean is this, basically ascending, sliding, descending. And a really great exercise is to take these positions, play one position up, slide to the next position and then descend, slide, ascend, descend, slide, ascend, and then you can des decide you're descending, sliding, ascending. And again, any variation is very welcome. The point is just to try and map these things in different ways so it's flexible. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching and listening. It means a lot. I'll see you next week. Peace.